I am so excited to finally be out today in this beautiful national park. It's been on my to visit list for such a long time now and I cannot wait to jump in and share it all with you. But first of all, hello everybody, big welcome back. I hope you're just as excited for another adventure as I certainly am, where over this video, I'm gonna be taking you out to explore Wilson's Prom and what it's like to go hiking in the Southern Circuit. I plan on being out here for about three days, but I'm gonna jump straight on into it with you. Located in Victoria, Australia, Wilson's Prom National Park was established in 1898 and today covers over an incredible 50,000 plus hectares of the southernmost tip of the Australian mainland. It is incredibly popular year round with hikers, campers and tourists alike, partially for its proximity to major locations like Melbourne, just three hours to the northwest, but also for its accessibility, variety, wildlife and incredible views. The park has a number of both drive-in and hike-in camping options, as well as numerous walking tracks and trails. However, it is the Southern Circuit, one of the park's longer multi-day walks that I've chosen to personally complete and share with you for week five of ticking off my bucket list this year and hopefully adding some incredible locations and inspiration to yours. This trail starts from the Telegraph Saddle Car Park, just beyond the visitor center, and like the rest of the park's roads is highly maintained and accessible to almost any vehicle. From this point, there are multiple routes in which you can undertake this circuit or even shorter day walks such as Mount Oberon. In this case, I'll be sharing a 55 kilometer return circuit, including South Point, Wilson's Prom Light Station, Waterloo Bay, Roaring Meg and Oberon Bay Campgrounds. It is important to note, however, for those thinking of visiting the park themselves, that a number of tracks are currently still closed for erosion damage, but set to be reopened later on in the year. Day one starts with a quick 5.9k hike to Roaring Meg Campground, most of which is completed on dirt road and park management trails. Vic parks do require all campgrounds to be pre-booked and walkers to check in, However, after this point, you are free to explore the park. Halfway in is situated the appropriately named Halfway Hut Campground, another option for those looking to take a smaller walking circuit. Then of course, a few beautiful open views of the wider park as you start to climb and a changing landscape as you make your way back down into camp. The Roaring Meg Campground offers primitive walk-in bush camping sites, beautifully situated right on the creek, and enough flat clearings for probably around a maximum of 10 tents. It also, thankfully in my opinion, gives hikers the opportunity to leave their packs and venture a little further to South Point, a 7.4 kilometer return trail, winding back to the coast and past some stunning natural granite outcrops overlooking the ocean. before finally ending at geographically the southernmost point of the Australian mainland, some 3,180 kilometers from the tip of Cape York. Day two brings the opportunity for breakfast by the water. No cafes or crowds here, which I love to see. Quite simply put, you pack it in, you pack it out. So oats and coffee it was for me. This is also a perfect opportunity to fill up on drinking water from the running stream. And again, like most overnight trails, parks advise that all hikers are to be fully self-sufficient and either treat or boil water before drinking. Back on trail, the next destination is the historic park light station and a vastly different and overgrown in comparison track compared to the maintenance roads of the previous day. That said, all trails I personally saw I thought were very well signed and I was incredibly impressed here by just how much work had gone into making the park accessible and how friendly and passionate about the park every single ranger I met was. 
There are opportunities for lookouts before reaching the lighthouse and whilst it is by no means an overly strenuous walk, I'd highly recommend making the most of them with some of them truly being the best views in the park. The light station again is a great opportunity to leave your pack and take some time exploring the history of the area and open ocean views. From the light station to our next stop in Waterloo Bay is a recommended 3 hours and probably the most brutal 10Ks of the hike for myself personally. Nothing at all against the track, once again stunning scenery, just fairly repetitive uphill sections or maybe the fact that I hadn't been on a longer hike in a while and I was eating lunch on the go. All things aside, the view descending back down into Waterloo Bay undoubtedly makes up for any complaint you may have had. This bay truly is stunning and incredible to think how untouched while also so relatively easily accessible. It is also remarkably similar in comparison to other southern multi-day coastal walks such as the Freycinot Peninsula Circuit through Wineglass Bay down in Tasmania. Unfortunately, similarly also to Tasmania, the weather is remarkably changeable here with the sunshine one moment and thunderstorms rolling in the next, which if you're out hiking, I can tell you is slightly less than ideal. Just beyond this beach is situated the booked out little Waterloo Bay campground, which means it certainly helps to be prepared with wet weather gear and back on trail to the Oberon Bay campground where I had personally booked for the night. Another eight kilometers or so of walking in the rain and I have never hiked quicker or been more thankful to have a rain jacket. This section of trail offers beautiful boardwalks and inland scenery. However, it did get fairly heavy after this point with rain. Quick dinner set up in my tent, which I would highly not recommend cooking inside, but had little other choice with no hikers huts or other shelter available. We copped about 60 mil of rain overnight with temperatures dropping down to around 9 degrees which was unfortunately far from the predicted weather forecast. Day 3 appears to be off to such a beautiful start and truly rain hail or shine it was incredible just being out in this park. Unfortunately, the sun only stayed out for all of five minutes, so here I am boiling my drinking water on the veranda of the toilet block. Classy, I know. Then back on trail for the final nine and a half Ks back to the campground through the rain. And finally, back to the car park and look out a Telegraph Saddle viewing platform. At this point, it actually hailed in a crazy cold snap. But I was so incredibly lucky to be back and warm and dry. This park, regardless of weather, is an absolute gem for Victoria and one I'm so thankful to now have experienced and be able to share. I'll certainly be visiting again in future and I hope to see you all again soon for next week's adventure.